I've been leading into hobbies a lot and I decided that I want to finally learn how to knit a sweater. I know like the basics of knitting, but I really never made something very successful in a round before. I never made a hat. Um, I've never made a sweater. And one of my goals for this year was to learn how to actually knit a sweater. I decided to invest a interchangeable needle set. I got this set from Knit Picks. Um, I got this off Amazon. And for some reason I thought that like, getting a US 4 to a US 11 would be enough, but a lot of the sweater patterns I'm looking at have much chunkier needles. So I'm actually gonna return this. And so I decided to spend a lot more and invest in an even larger set. So this is like a deluxe set that I bought. Um, I opened it yesterday, so it's kind of crazy, but it is a Knitter's Pride set. This is like a pretty fancy bag. I might get a different one. I'm not sure I love this packaging. Um, but it's really cool. So up here in this pocket is where they put all of like the interchangeable cords. And then in this section are all of the needles. I'm currently using one of the pairs. So I think it looks really cool. I'm really excited. I made a lot of progress on this sweater. I might transfer this to a larger cord soon, but I just wanna show you. I finished the ribbing of the neckline and now I'm currently working on the body or like this part of the sweater. Um, I successfully learned how to do a make one right and make one left, which are just like increased stitches that go right and left. Um, and it's really interesting to learn about how sweaters are constructed knitting wise. So now I wanna show you the increase stitches I learned how to do um, that kind of create this like really cool, see how like they're diverging in two different directions? I don't know if you can tell. And then after I changed color, I divided the sweater into four different sections. There was one, two larger sections for the front and back and two smaller sections for the sleeves. And then your sweater basically grows out from those points. I have my stitch marker, so this marks the beginning of the row. And I'm gonna knit one. So I knit one, and then I'm gonna do this thing called a make one left. Um, this is not a tutorial, I'm just, I'm just sharing. <laughs> um, it's a pretty interesting maneuver. And then I've created an additional stitch and it, it's gonna, it like leans towards the left. I have cozied up onto the couch and I'm making really good progress. Um, I have all of this so far. At this point, it's like a little early to try it on, but I'm just curious what it looks like. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of scrap yarn and a tapestry needle, weave it through all of my stitches around and then tie it off um, and then try it on. And then after I'll use that as an opportunity to switch to a longer cord. You are so handsome. Are you gonna help me? Hmm? Are you gonna help me? It's looking very cute actually. So I put the tapestry needle in and this is what it looks like. You can very clearly tell with the sleeves start, which I'm happy about. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep on knitting and knitting until this part gets to a place I'm satisfied with. I like it when um, the drop of where the sleeve connects is a little lower. So I think I'm gonna do probably like double. 
So just pop it over my head like this. How does it look? <laughs> Let me see. Oh my god, it looks really cute! Okay, I definitely have a really long way to go, but it feels really nice. Um, I'm super excited. I think it looks really pretty. I hate it when sweaters are really tight around my armpit, so I want to let that go a little bit longer. So yeah, we're gonna keep going. Okay, it's Friday and I've been making really good progress on my sweater. So I wanna show you guys. I put in um, the yarn. I put in a piece of yarn throughout all the stitches last night so I could try it on. So I'm gonna do another try on. <laughs> I don't really know. Cause it kind of sits a bit shorter in the back, but um, yeah, I wanna make sure this is longer, like I said before. like. See how low my t-shirt is? Like that's kind of how loose I want it because I just want it super comfy, cozy, at least down here. So yeah, that is 11 inches. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You guys know by now, Squarespace can help you build a really great website. Another thing I love about Squarespace is that they just make the website building process as easy as possible. They have this really cute questionnaire. Um, so say I was a photographer that wanted to grow my business, I could just check those options. If I had a goal of taking appointments, I could check that as well. And then they just generate all of these templates that will align with your goals and what you're looking for. And I feel like, by honing in on some templates you might like, it just makes the process a lot easier. Uh, and you're not locked down to any particular template too. You can customize them as I have as well. Um, so yeah, Squarespace is great. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial when you're ready to launch. Go to squarespace.com slash Megan Wang for 10% off your first purchase. I thought I would show you my final sweater check-in. I really wanted this video to be like, I knit my first sweater and I get to show you like the whole process, but that just wasn't realistic. Um, and I'll probably show you what it looks like in my next one. A lot of progress uh, since we last checked in. I basically have the whole front half. It's really hard to show you what it looks like right now just because I have so many stitches and it's accumulated on my cord, which just doesn't look long enough to show you. But I had even sectioned off where all the sleeves would be and I tied them off and I was just working on the body. So at that point, like I basically had some cap sleeves and I was building out the bottom half of the sweater and it was going really well. But then I decided like, hmm, I should probably try it on just in case, even though I did measure out like the length I wanted here. And lo and behold, it was way too tight. I mean, not too tight, it fit me, but I knew the minute I put it on, I wouldn't wear it because the minute something's like a little bit too tight, like I just don't want to wear it. And I knew like, even though I would finish it and it would be a, a really nice garment, I mean, really nice, it would be a good garment, but um, it just wouldn't be something I would reach for. So I frogged a lot of uh, stitches. Like I frogged like a, this much um, of the sweater and I undid all the little sleeves I tied off and I just started over again. Yeah, now I'm just working on expanding it even more than I thought I would. Uh, I'm gonna try it on one more time before I tie off the sleeves again. Um, but yeah, just wanted to check in and show you what it's looking like right now. I also need to get another yarn ball going well and in the next video i'll show you guys what it looks like okay so basically what happened was i had finished packing all my orders you can watch the last vlog i was very happy i packed so many in three days i was so proud of myself i had fa finally felt for like one of the first times ever that i had a really successful shop update there wasn't a lot i could have done better i was just like wow I did really good and I, I was so calm during it. I was really proud of how like, I was a little bit emotionally detached from the results. I was just like, I don't want to get too upset if things don't go well. Like, And I went on a walk with Robert. We go on a little walk together every day after work. Um, when I came home, I was gonna take a shower. I'm wearing um, the strawberry cat socks. I had worn them all day. I took them off to put them in the wash. 
And as I took the socks off, I looked closer and noticed there were some little holes at the seam on the very top of the sock where like the toes meet. And my, my heart literally sank to the bottom of my stomach. I don't even know if that's the right expression, but my heart sank. Um, I immediately got kind of tunnel vision, anxiety. I was like, fuck, why do my socks have holes in them after one wear? Is it the shoes I wore? I got some like new sandals recently. Maybe they like rubbed on them weird. I was like, that can't be right. I've worn these shoes with plenty of other socks and this hasn't happened. I run into my office and I'm like looking at all the pairs of socks. I, I had about five extra pairs that like, I guess I miscounted or something. And I'm sure I like forgot to put one in one of the orders. Like I always mess up one or two. I'm taking the cardboard sleeve off and like looking at the seam and I noticed for a couple of them the top seam where the toes is isn't fully interlocked so like if you rub it a little the seams will start to unravel so it's not something I would notice when I'm packing when I get the products in for the first time I'm looking at them it's just not something that's like very obvious to like the untrained eye I guess so yeah I I looked at a bunch of them and like one or two out of the ones I had left were weird. So I don't know like statistically how many in the whole batch were messed up, but I can assume it is a substantial amount. It's not all of them. I'm sure most of them are probably fine. My fingers are crossed that most of them are fine, but there will be a couple I'm sure that I sent out that had that seam problem. And yeah, like it's not something you'll notice. Like you, they, people might wear it like once or twice and then the seams might start to like create little holes. So yeah, I was so upset. I I got really anxious, honestly, really upset for like a good two days. I like frantically texted Tiffany. I was like, Tiffany, what do I do? And she was so helpful. And I texted like my sister and my mom. I talked it through with Robert. Um, what I ended up doing thanks to like all of their help and advice was I found a way to email all of the people who purchased a pair of socks. And I just like really sincerely said, I'm sorry. If you're watching this and you bought a pair of socks from me, know that I'm I'm really, really sorry. I was just so upset about this because I, I like being proud of the quality of products I send people. Like I think my shop is a, is a reflection of me and I never want to send someone something that like is poorly made. Um, and I thought they were good, but obviously they weren't. Anyways, I sent them like a really long email apologizing and just saying like, here's something to keep, keep a, eye out for some of you will receive socks that are fine but you know there is a chance that you will receive a defective pair and i let them know like to please email me immediately and i will either replace it or give you a refund whichever you prefer um, i also contacted my manufacturers immediately because i was not happy i was like you're a sock company the one thing you need to do correctly is make a sock like so obviously i will not be working with them again in the future the funny thing is like I went with them also because um, I had an art friend that made socks through them and like they came out amazing. So I contacted that I contacted that friend too being like have you gotten any emails from customers? Like did you find this with your socks? And they were like no, like mine are fine. So was it just my batch? I don't know. But yeah, I just think they have like really shitty quality control, so I won't be going with them again, but I did contact them and they said they're sorry and they were they're going to send me a new batch that will be better checked. I mean, I, I fucking hope so. <laughs> so the next batch I receive, hopefully are gonna be okay. So, and then I also gave them a pretty nice discount code just because I felt so bad. Um, and I know most of the people who support my online store like are really, really nice and no one has said anything yet, but I just, I was so sad cause I was like, oh, I feel like people are gonna be unhappy with me. I also was beating myself up. I was just like, this is your first time making socks. Like you should have checked them more thoroughly. But after I was talking to my sister and my mom, they were just like, you didn't know, like you held them up, they looked right. And also like their socks, like you, you that's not something that like you would immediately know to check for. Um, in the future, if I ever manufacture something again, like I'm going to grade everything like as best I can. And then for wearables like this, I'm going to use them for at least a week to hopefully avoid problems like this in the future. And yeah, that's it. I have some good news. So yesterday um, I got my new socks delivered and 
I checked all of them and they seem to be good. Um, I really hounded the manufacturer. I sent them a bunch of messages being like, can I have video approved? Did you double check? Like, can you please like double check? Like I was very annoying, but I just did not want to have the same problem happen again. So yeah, I've, I've gone through a couple of them. Let me go through another batch. I stretched out all the seams and I like kind of brushed it with my finger to see if any of the seams would pull apart and I'm not seeing it happen. So I do think they actually made them correctly this time, which is awesome. Basically, this is where the issue would happen, where I would go like this and I would rub my finger over the top of the toe seam and then the stitching here would unravel. But so far, like it looks good. Hi guys. <laughs> I'm having a kind of a shitty day or like, I'm having an off week, I think. Um, basically, my period should be coming soon. So I'm PMSing, which is already like, not a good foundation. <laughs> um, mentally, I get a lot of period. I get a lot of anxiety. I get really sad. I just feel so off, but I really want to make art and I just feel like the bad vibes with art making is not working. Um, so yeah, I thought we could go on a little getting out of a mini art funk together day. No expectations, I just wanna play in my sketchbook.
This is probably my favorite thing I've ever painted. <laughs> that sounds very, very dramatic, but I was really, really proud of this painting. I feel like it marked, um, I don't wanna say milestone, but I feel like it was a big stepping point is that the right word? Stepping stone in the right direction. Um, a lot of you know if you've followed my YouTube channel for some time that I struggle a lot with traditional work. I'm really comfortable with digital on my iPad and stuff, but traditional art is really where I find a lot of difficulty and it's just because I don't have enough practice. I learned how to illustrate on an iPad, so it's just kind of difficult to paint. Um, but I've been working at it for the past year or so. I've been doing more painting where I can, and I think I've been improving. And it's just really, really cool to see. I got really inspired by my mom's peonies. She has these two bushes in her front yard that have these huge blooms every year for like a week. And she fills the house with all these peonies. They give me a headache because <laughs> the house just smells so floral, but I'm not there this year. So I got to enjoy all of the photos from afar. Um, some of the pictures were just so beautiful. I felt really compelled to paint and you know, when the inspiration hits, you gotta, you gotta go after it. And I just love how it came out. I used these thicker bristle brushes to put down the paint in these flat colors. And then I went in with like a finer brush to do, I guess more like illustrated, um, illustrative, is that a word? <laughs> illustrative line work. And I feel like that really helped the piece become more me. As I was just putting the flat la flat lays down of the color, I was kind of like, I don't know where this is going. It's pretty, but it doesn't really feel like me. Um, but I had so much fun uh, painting in the little lines of the flower leaves. Um, and yeah, I just really love um, simplifying and illustrating flowers. It's just so much fun to do them in my style because they're so colorful. There's so many fun shapes to interpret. Um, and yeah. This piece was so much fun to do, and I feel like I had a similar process um, that I do with digital art, because when I work on my iPad, a lot of my process when I make art is just like workshopping and problem solving. Like, I'll change how I do things, I'll paint over stuff, I'll switch colors, and I used to find a lot of difficulty transitioning that style of working into my traditional work just because changing colors and like textures and whatever, and there's no undo button, so my process would just take a really long time. But for some reason, I think with all the practice I've been doing, the whole process has just been easier. Like you can see here, I just got rid of the gray background I did. I was like, I want this to be pink, um, but it didn't take that long, so I think my somehow i'm just improving um and yeah i had so much fun and i really really like this piece and yeah enjoy the rest of the painting
So yesterday I got to go to LA Zine Fest and it was so, so much fun. I don't really know what I was expecting. I kind of just thought like I'd go in and like, I'm not really like tapped in in the world of zines. So I, yeah, I just didn't really know what to expect. I just thought I would go hang out with my friends. It would be a fun time, but I didn't, I just didn't expect I would spend so much money. But yeah, it was a really, really good event. Um, it kind of reminded me of Mocha in a way, like very much like an art market, but um, it was a little bit more like indie vibes. I think because Mocha is run by the Society of Illustrators, it's a bit more like, I don't know how to explain it. I just left feeling super inspired. It was really well done. It's also free, which is super cool. It's a free event. Let me show you what I got. So the first thing I bought was this absolutely gorgeous print. Um, I just couldn't stop looking at it. Like I just knew I had to have it. It's also a really good size. Um, and I'm so excited to frame this and put it in my new apartment. Um, next, I got this zine from a press, Poppy Press. Another cool thing about this event was there were a lot of like presses there selling work um, by a bunch of different artists, which I always think is really cool. I was really drawn to this kind of line work. Lately, I've been really into like kind of um, like an MS paint kind of line art vibe. A lot of these things I'm just so excited about because if I ever feel uninspired or some way, I can just like flip through them um, and kind of get the juices flowing. Next, I got to meet an artist I'm actually like a huge fan of. His name's Daniel. He goes by Oh It's Zo on Instagram. Um, I found his work through Twitter through Shortbox Comics, which is like an independent comics publisher. Um, he made this comic about like playing a Pokemon game and it just like really impacted me for some reason like it made me like emotional but also like feel so happy and i just thought it was a really beautiful comic and the art style too i just like absolutely loved so yeah i just didn't even know he was going to be there so it was super cool to finally meet him in person um but i got a couple things from him he did a run of these shirts um i don't know when it was a while ago but it's so cute the graphic just says bliss and it's like like internet explorer like background with some animals and a computer and I don't know it just reminds me of like when I was a kid and I would just like play Neopets on my parents computer in the computer room and <laughs> I don't know I just I just really love this shirt Rover's here he says hello you didn't get to go to LA Zine Fest you can't babies aren't allowed there sorry also from Daniel I got this really cute print Looks like this. Um, I picked up this zine from him called Blue and Red Horses. And it's a gorgeous zine. You can see the back. Um, Rover. And another really cool thing about this zine is that it folds out into a full size print, which is so cool. It's beautiful too. Like I really couldn't stop looking at this and I'm super excited to hang it up. Next, I got to see my friend Bridget, who I haven't seen in almost a year, so it was super cool to see them. They go by Ginger Bridge on Instagram, and they gave me this little sticker. And then I picked up this zine by Coriangry. Cor Coriangry? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but she had this like really, really cool um, like 3D like installation sculpture thing. Um, and it was just like so awesome. And I, I just think like the back of it's so funny. But yeah, it really spoke to me and I, I just really, really enjoy stuff like this. And also very topical. <laughs> oh, I also got to meet someone called Rukita Linda who gifted me this really cute bag. It's like a mini tote bag and it says I only read zines and it's the perfect size for zines. So I was able to kind of walk around and um, put my zines in it and I was just so touched. So thank you so much for gifting this to me. I will definitely treasure this. And next time I go to a zine fair, I'm gonna bring it and have like a little zine purse. <laughs> is a Tara 101 guide. I've always been very intrigued with tarot. I've never really trusted myself to like buy a deck and like kind of learn how to read it. I always, I've gotten like readings done from friends before and it's always been a really cool experience. Um, um, all the information looks like it's laid out in a really clear way, but it, it seems like really thorough. Like there's a lot of pages, so really excited to learn. Um, and then lastly, I got this scene called Dog World by Eileen um, Chavez. And I also just couldn't stop looking at this. So many things that I was walking around the fair, I just like, my eyes would just go to something like this print, for example, and I would just be like, I can't stop looking at that. I need that. And... Rover! He just can't stand not being the center of attention for a little bit. 
Um, and he's mad he couldn't go to Ali's Zine Fest. As I was saying, there were just things at the fest where I would just notice and wouldn't be able to like take my eyes off of that I just found really like magnetic. And I kind of want to like look at all these things and decide like what it is about all of the artwork that I was drawn to and try to incorporate it more into my artwork. What I also really liked about this one was the pencil textures. Um, I don't really get this kind of look in my own risograph work because I do it all digitally. After we finished up the zine fest, we went to go eat in Alhambra. And in Alhambra is also Gallery Nucleus, which is a very dangerous place for me because I always buy stuff too. Um, new retro illustrations. And as I was flipping through this, I just like, every page I flipped through, I was just like, whoa, whoa. Whoa, so I just knew instantly that I really wanted to buy this and I've been really wanting to increase my art book collection as well. I really only own like two, three art books. This is like my third one. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I invested in it and I always have to remind myself like it's so good for my business. Um, it's just really good for my practice to own things like this so I can just like get inspired and... Yes, Mister. But yeah, I think it's really cool. I guess it's like they curated a selection of artists who have kind of more of a retro inspired style, but that, that were made like obviously in our modern time. I just thought all of these works were so beautiful and I'm really excited to just like flip through this and like do some studies and like look at the color palettes. Uh-huh. So yeah, that's my little LA Zine Fest haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, I had such a good time and obviously I won't be here next year, but if you will be in um, LA or like the SoCal area, they actually had it in Long Beach. So like if you're in the SoCal area, I would highly recommend um, checking out the event because I just thought it was really well done and it was just really fun, um, really good vibes. So <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right, Mister? Yeah, you can go. We'll be in Brooklyn by then. All right.